Hello and welcome to Reroll. My name is Angus Morrison covering the third day of the Steam Summer Sale. Uh, my apologies for yesterday's outdated information. Steam lowered their prices considerably in the time that the video was uploading, which is great for anyone who bought anything, but made me want to kill things. But we shall dive straight into today's offerings in the blind hope that Steam will get it right the first time. Headlining is 2013's Tomb Raider, which might be a little contentious. My full Tomb Raider review is available on my channel for anybody interested, but in short, I don't find myself agreeing with the lavish praise of Tomb Raider by the wider press. And don't get me wrong, the Tomb Raider series was in dire need of a reboot, but not one that aligned it with the cinematic running, gunning, and prompted button pressing of so many other AAA games. Tomb Raider leaps back in time, spinning a new origin story, shipwrecking a fresh-faced Lara on the mysterious island of Yamatai. But while Crystal Dynamics tries to tell a tale of personal development, of a vulnerable girl learning to cope with the wilderness, it's not ten minutes before you're mowing down veritable armies of goons in what quickly becomes akin to a cover shooter. The much more open maps are a welcome improvement over the linear dungeons of previous games, allowing you to plot your own route to an objective. It's a shame, though, that this rarely involves anything in the way of problem solving. None of the grand puzzles or tough platforming challenges of the series remain, the levels serving more as arenas for combat than a real delight to explore. What tombs there are consist of single simplistic puzzles which yield upgrade materials for guns. It all exists to serve the combat. But for 75% off at £7.49, I will begrudgingly say that if you go in in the knowledge that it is a heavily scripted action adventure rather than a puzzle platformer, you'll probably have a good time. If you don't own it already, Borderlands 2 at 66% off is something that's not to be missed, because it contains hours of entertainment and all with the possibility of drop-in, drop-out, four-player co-op. The basic principle is kill enemies, get loot, but unlike so many similar games, it's prevented from quickly wearing thin by a cast which is equal parts lovable and psychotic, a theme reinforced by accomplished cell shading. It's not without its problems, of course. The humour has a puerile tendency which needs to be reined in, and when you've completed the storyline once, the game's solution is for you to simply play it again, but harder. And harder in Borderlands essentially boils down to more enemy health and resistance to damage. By the time you reach the dizzying heights of Ultimate Vault Hunter, bad guys are essentially bullet sponges. Still, the first time round it is a very fun shooter which never takes itself too seriously, and playing with friends will stave off the boredom. A four pack can be yours for £20.39 while a single copy is £6.79. As a side note here, for some time I've featured a channel in the top right corner of my own page by the name of Finally Anime. He is an excellent YouTuber who happens to have an equally excellent range of Borderlands 2 guides available, from class builds to loot lists. If you end up scooping a copy of Borderlands 2 this sale, I highly recommend checking him out. Moving on, The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings offers today's largest savings, having shaved 75% off its price. Not quite as generous as yesterday's biggest offers, but it's hard to complain given the price tag of £3.74. I'm always in two minds about The Witcher. It's a game that I want to love, but something always gets in the way. For The Witcher 2, it's the notoriously sluggish controls which are at odds with the fluid, motion-captured combat at which CD Projekt Red was aiming. Particularly at lower levels, when your health is low and your attacks puny, frustration often results when the lag between input and result is too great to avoid an attack which you correctly predicted. But if you're after a truly dark and detailed RPG with a story that captures the gritty politics of a kingdom which has lost its crown, you may be able to weather its flaws and enjoy a few dozen hours immersed in the Witcher's world. And then it's really mediocre from there. The reception received by the HD remake of Age of Empires 2, which was a true classic in its day, can best be described as tepid, the only real difference between the original and the remake being the amount of land on the screen at any one time. Faults such as AI pathfinding are as prevalent as they ever were, and you'll often find your troops doing interesting loops in their route to shake things up a bit. And there is of course the mysterious disappearance of land play, which, with a group of friends, was half the draw. If you have access to the original, I'd stick with that, and if you don't, your £7.49 is effectively buying you a 14-year-old game. Resident Evil 6 is another game which is best described as universally meh. 
Visual improvements beyond Resident Evil 5 and the console versions of Resident Evil 6 are apparent, but beyond that, gameplay has retreated from anything resembling survival horror to the familiar, QTE-ridden, action-packed, cinematic meh. It does nothing to distinguish itself, and awkward controls do little to help its case. Your tenor can be better invested elsewhere. Oh, and if anyone was wondering whether Sniper Elite Nazi Zombie Army was going to offer a beacon of artistic brilliance in the midst of the mediocrity, I'm... I'm so sorry. An expand alone for Sniper Elite V2, Nazi Zombie Army boasts the shooting gallery of the original but without much of a look in from the eponymous weapon. It just seems like the result of the marketing department going, Hey guys, you know what people like? Zombies. You have till the end of the week. Save your 339 and see what tomorrow brings. There's no specific game I'm going to single out as the one to avoid today. The whole sale is rather uninspiring, with the exceptions of Borderlands 2, The Witcher 2 and Tomb Raider, if you're a fan of its new style. And while great, even these have flaws in need of addressing. The rest is a slew of mediocrity, and the product which has been rated highest by users, which is RPG Maker VX Ace, isn't technically a game? That one may be worth looking into yourself. I've also spotted the potential for our first overlapping deal. Antichamber is currently one of the contenders for the next Community's Choice deal, despite its presence in the 11th's daily deals and its subsequent spot in yesterday's deals for the 12th. An uninspiring third day then. Let's pick up the slack tomorrow, Steam.